the new year almost always promises a new crop of food fads. Here's the founder of Food Trends TV, Dana McCauley, who joins us now to show us the next round of Tasty Trends. So you? I'm good awesome. to see you, Dana. Yeah, it's great to be here. I, it's a tough act to follow, right. but I have some predictions. They uh, might not be as uh, <laughs> spot on as those ones. And uh, there's a lot of interesting things happening and a lot, of, a lot of crossover. So it's funny. We could divide this table in about 10 different ways and mm -hmm. still have, have uh, lots to talk about. Um, one of the things that's really trending up in North America and in Europe is non-GMO product launches. Right. There's thousands of them each year. Mm -hmm. And what's really interesting is that the emerging science is showing that that's kind of a misuse of our money as far as uh, innovation dollars yep. go. Because we're finding out that uh, non-GMO, there's not a lot of science to back up mm -hmm. the um, the emotional attachment people have to wanting to avoid GMOs. But that said, it's still going to keep being a thing, and we're going to see lots and lots of products coming out with uh, this label on it here in North America. Not so yeah. much in developing world where they're going to embrace biotechnology because it's cheaper. And they need the food. A lot they of need the food. Feed. Yeah. yeah. So then another thing that's really interesting, and you and I talked a bit about uh, how uh, vegetarians find things like this certified humane uh, certification interesting. And I think it's um, uh, trending up, not just because it uh, appeals to people who care about animals, mm -hmm. but also because it encompasses all of mm -hmm. the other claims you see. So when you see antibiotic-free, hormone-free, right. etc., that's all covered in the certified yeah, and, uh, humane. I, I will more and more than tiptoe back into yeah, I was surprised that you're, uh, you know, as a vegetarian, that you're buying yeah, well, like this for your children and you're dabbling a bit yeah, I've always again. I've eaten fish during this whole time, but this was why I stopped, was cruelty. So Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. Good. So then, wait, fermented foods. So the whole idea of gut health, and this is kind of like everything old is new. I remember my Ukrainian baba drinking kefir, and I was like, ooh, what's that gross stuff? Now it's fashionable. Uh, <laughs> kombucha, traditional foods like um, sauerkraut, everyone's eating them to get the, the probiotic health that uh, is similar to yogurt, but mm -hmm. uh, apparently... So that balances kind of all the... Uh, Bacteria and all that sort of stuff that's Apparently. in our belly. Yeah, that's, yeah, I'm not a scientist. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a I'm a marketer and food trends person, a foodie. Mm -hmm. But that's the way I understand it. Okay. That uh, you get all these good. Speaking dudes. of being a foodie, how about this stuff right yeah. here? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. The, what's interesting about you know, chicken wings are always fantastic, but mm -hmm. it's the gochujang, which is a Korean hot sauce, and I think it's going to be sort of the next sriracha and uh, kimchi. People going out for bibimbap. Um, traditionally, so many of our Japanese restaurants were actually run by Korean people. Mm -hmm. Now, here in Toronto and across the country, they're actually kind of owning being Korean, and it's mainstreaming into the grocery store. Right. So you're going to see lots more Korean flavors. Amazing. Dana McCauley, thank you so much. Food Trends for 2016. Thank